Bordetella pertussis. What is it? How does it work? And why is it dangerous? Bordetella pertussis, or B. pertussis, is a gram-negative aerobic pathogenic encapsulated coccobaculus, in other words, a bacteria of the genus Bordetella that causes whooping cough. So pertussis is a worldwide health threat, and although it has been studied extensively, the specific interactions between the virulence factors causing pertussis are still unknown. In the majority of cases, those afflicted by pertussis suffer from coughing fits. The illness is especially serious in infants who can contract more severe or even fatal infections, experiencing apneic episodes without any coughing. B. pertussis is a localized infection, meaning that it rarely spreads outwards from the respiratory tract. Pertussis may cause the following symptoms. Paroxysmal cough, more commonly known as a coughing fit, which may persist days or even weeks after the infection has cleared. Dysregulated secretion of insulin. Post-tussive vomiting, resulting in dehydration and malnutrition. Alterations in neurologic functions, such as confusion, syncope, seizures, and loss of consciousness. Disease development, also known as pathogenesis, occurs in the following way. First, there is exposure or inoculation, with an incubation averaging 7 to 10 days. This is then followed by tissue tropism or attachment, which is uh, the bacteria attaching itself to the part of the host where it can grow the best, so the part which supports growth. Then there is proliferation and production of virulence factors, followed by evasion or modulation of host defenses. In other words, these are strategies for avoiding or inactivating the immune detection of the host organism. Then. We have local and systemic cell and tissue dysfunction or damage. Finally, the illness can either end in chronic infection, death in the worst case, or then just normal recovery, also known as clearance and resolution of all symptoms. B. pertussis has a number of proteins required for it to cause disease, also known as virulence factors, but only those products that have been shown by studies to be relevant will be covered here. So first there is pertussis toxin, PT, then filamentous uh, hemagglutin, if FHA, then pertactin, PRN, fimbriae, FIM, Andenolate cyclase toxin, ACT, tracheal cytotoxin, TCT, lipooligosaccharide, LOS, and finally, dermonecrotic toxin, DNT. Out of these, pertussis toxin, filamentous hemagglutinin, pertactin, and fimbriae are present in current vaccines. Some studies have shown the impact these virulence factors have on pathogenesis of the disease, but that is beyond the scope of this video. And in addition, as I already stated, the exact interactions of these virulence factors in order to cause the disease is actually unknown. Hopefully you have found this video useful. Please give it a like and share it with someone who can benefit from it as well. And let me know what else you would like me to cover on this channel in the comments below. Until next time.